Hey guys, it's Sarah here. Today I am back with another Traveler's Notebook process video. Um, I'm doing a fold out with a full page picture for this layout. Um, I, I did actually post an Instagram photo with a similar layout. Like I think it's been a month now and I had quite a few people request a process video um, sharing how I made that. So here it is. Um, I am working in my daughter's four month traveler's notebook and I'm using this uh, full page photo of her on her four month birthday. And I absolutely love this photo of her smiling. I think it captures her personality perfectly. She's just so smiley and laughing all the time. And um, I just wanted this to kind of be the center of attention on this page. So I wanted to use that whole photo. Um, I just, I kind of cropped it right where her arm was. I wanted to make sure, of course, that I didn't um, cut it anywhere kind of near her face. Um, but I did want it to kind of come over into the next page. So I could have, obviously, I could have just cropped it so that it would fit on one on the left-hand side of that Traveler's Notebook page. But I really like kind of the different look. I feel like it's a little bit more unique if it goes over um, onto the next page and I feel like it kind of gives it a nice transition into the pattern paper. So it's a little bit more unexpected and just a little bit different. So I love kind of doing that whenever I can. It also works great if you have a horizontal photo that maybe you don't want to crop um, too short so you can just kind of flip the notebook and do it that way and that's kind of the layout that I did for um, For the photo that I shared on Instagram like a month a month ago It was kind of a travel themed um, notebook page and I had just a horizontal family photo So I'm just deciding on what pattern paper well this actually isn't a pattern paper It's just a single block color of um, Felicity Jane cardstock and I really loved this scallop edge. So I think I have a few different colors. I want to say, I think her cardstock um, papers always come with this scallop. I could be wrong. Um, it could just be like the, the papers that I've received from her have this little scallop edge. But I absolutely love that. And I thought that would look really cute kind of. Um, up against the photo there. So I wanted to make sure that I left that part visible when um, I adhered this down. So I just made sure that um, I had kind of the proper size to go against my photo there, that it would just kind of fit on the leftover part of that right hand page. I would adhere that down and then I'm going to cut a little bit of that flap off just so that the scalloped edge um, shows up there. So hopefully this is making sense in conjunction with the um, with the video here. I don't know, I feel like I'm spewing out words and I don't know if it's making sense, but um, hopefully it is all making sense with the video and what I'm saying. So um, I also had a couple of two by two photos that I wanted to also include here. Um, but I knew that they weren't really gonna fit on the fold. Um, I was either going to have to kind of fold them or kind of cut them like I had for the large photo and I really didn't want to do either one of those so what I decided with that was that I was going to kind of have them hang off the fold so you'll kind of see what I mean they're going to stick out from the side a little bit and they'll create like two little tabs on the edge there um, and I really liked the look of that and it ended up working out perfectly with this layout because I had a couple of numbers that I'm going to incorporate in here in a little bit and they fit perfectly. So I would say that I planned all this out and it was just, you know, brilliant on my part. But honestly, a lot of this is just sort of happy accidents and I just kind of go with the flow and sometimes you just have things that work out and you go with it and other times I make huge mistakes and try to go with it so it's just I don't know it's all the fun of scrapbooking and kind of going with your instincts and just playing around and um, that's kind of what happened here was just kind of playing around and uh, it just worked towards my advantage in the end that this layout ended up kind of coming together nicely. So I backed those photos with a little bit of a dark turquoise 
um, cardstock. And I did that because I knew that the back part of the photo was going to show um, through the flap. So I wanted to have a little bit of a color there and not, um, and not just the back, that plain white color from the back of the photo. So that's what I'm doing there. I totally messed this up and just adhered tape all to the back of this one and so I had to kind of redo that and um, stick it down again and I don't know sometimes I'm like where was my brain when I was working on this page I'm not sure but <laughs> sometimes when I'm filming I think it's just the added pressure of um, wanting to kind of do things a little bit more quickly and not always thinking things through so there you go real life so now I'm going to kind of look through my embellishments. Actually, before I do embellishing, I'm going to um, do a little bit of stamping. So those are the numbers that I was mentioning. These are really old Studio Calico tags that I've had in my stash forever. I've had them, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, like I think over two years. Um, but I had one in like this coral color and then I had one that was kind of a dark grayish black. And I thought I was only gonna use one of the tags but I had both of them out because I wasn't sure what color was gonna work on this page. But since I had those two photos kind of sticking out there, I thought that it kind of looked nice to repeat that number and use that as kind of a design element there. So I'm kind of considering using both of those and I'm gonna kind of play around with that. Um, but first I'm going to do some stamping on my photo. I want to keep it pretty simple, but I do want kind of a graphic element on um, the photo itself. So I'm going in with a Kelly Perky stamp here, and I'm just inking it up with my black archival ink, making sure that it's kind of evenly distributed on the stamp itself. And then I'm just going to apply some firm pressure onto the stamp to make sure that I get a really good, nice impression there. Um, I do kind of spend a little bit more time stamping when I'm kind of stamping directly on a photo and especially if it's going to be kind of my title I want to make sure that I get a really good impression there. So I was going to stamp that little heart speech bubble directly onto the photo but I wanted to tie in a little bit of the blue that you can see from that flap from the um, the background of those two square photos. So I went ahead and I stamped it on that blue cardstock and then I'm just gonna fussy cut that out and I will adhere it above that sentiment that I just stamped out. I kind of love tying in the colors on both sides just to make sure that it looks even and um, you know that it's that it's kind of evened out on the entire page. So now I'm feeling pretty confident that I'm done with everything on my photo, so I'm going to go ahead and adhere it down. I am using just a regular Tombow permanent adhesive tape runner, um, but you could also use some red line tape if you're worried about your photo or your cardstock kind of coming up. I haven't had any issues with that happening um, with either full page photos or like a full page um, cardstock or pattern paper. That I'm adhering to the notebook but if you're worried about kind of the edges coming up you could definitely use an adhesive that's just a little bit stronger and um, I always love the red line tape I think it takes a little bit more time but that stuff is not going anywhere so it's a really great option so instead of um, kind of using these numbers just as they were I decided to use that blue um, cardstock just to back them I wanted that uh, coral 4 to be able to show up a little bit more since the background that it was going down on was pretty much the same color as um, the ticket itself. So I wanted to make sure that it stood out and it was just another way to kind of tie in that blue color. So I really like how those four little tabs there kind of stuck out and I feel like that was kind of a nice added touch there. And now I'm going to kind of go through my embellishments and um, start kind of filling out this page a little bit. I'm going to do one more stamp and it doesn't actually 
come out. So um, I think my my stamp wasn't able to go down on the page um, all the way. So the impression that I got was not very good. So I'm going to have to kind of cover that up. Um, but I did really like this little um, this little sentiment from that same Kelly Perky stamp set. So I wanted to get that on there, but I end up kind of covering up a majority of it anyways, just because of, um, you can see it kind of didn't ink up properly there and I tried kind of pressing it down again which can always be risky because you can end up kind of blurring the stamp um, but yeah it didn't it didn't really work there so now I'm gonna go through my Felicity Jane die cuts and try to find something that can cover that up when I'm working on a layout and I make a mistake like this I have to kind of cover it up immediately before I move on because I know I'm gonna to have to fix it anyway so I just want to see kind of what I'm working with and it's really hard for me to kind of move on from a mistake and you know let it go and then work on the rest of the page and then come back to it like I just I have to know that it's kind of fixed and it's good to go before I can move on so that is what I'm doing here spending quite a bit of time just uh, finding um, like a good size die cut that I can use right here and so I selected this little tab and I like how it looks I mean I would have preferred for the stamp and the sentiment on the stamp to um, to have been the kind of that graphic element right there but um, I think it still looks okay with that little tab there and it was kind of a nice solution to that mistake that I had made so now I just kind of want to balance things out and find a little something for the bottom that kind of ended up being a little bit of a photo strip there on the side. Um, of course I'm going for a heart because I absolutely love hearts. It's funny the things that you find out about yourself as you're kind of doing videos you notice like I always notice what embellishments I go back to and kind of the things that I gravitate towards because I'm always kind of watching myself back and doing these voiceovers so I use a lot of kind of puffy stickers and hearts I think those are kind of my favorite embellishments on um, really any project so I have these little um, Felicity Jane puffy stickers and I'm going to create a little arrow just pointing to that sentiment on the photo there. And I think I'm just going to pull in a couple more embellishments and then I'm just going to kind of finish things off with my journaling. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll do a little bit of music and then I'll come back to share the final project with you. So that's going to complete this page. Thank you so much for stopping by to watch this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new and I will see you guys in the very near future. Bye.